And I completely agree with the um, the sentiment that it's it's so um, it's such a shock, shocking experience that you kind of do have this feeling of how is this not the thing that everyone's talking about? How has this been kind of uh, kept a secret? And I guess that does lend itself to kind of conspiratorial thinking that it's kind of been actively kept a secret. Um, but I don't think there's no reason to believe that. And um, but but this 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 kind of feeling of, of the, the reality of the experience. Um, I mean, you you describe in in the book, kind of winding down the the studies out of a sense of kind of feeling like you didn't really know what you were playing with. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. You know, we can get to that, but I'm interested in the conspiratorial part. <laughs> you know, how might the lack of discussion of DMT be part of a conspiracy? Yeah, you know, because I wonder. You know, what's going on here? You mean you think there might be some some conspiratorial aspect? No, I well, I mean, you know, there could be, you know, but you were, you know, raising the conspiratorial issue. You know, are there conspiracy you know, theories out there on, oh, on yeah, why yeah. people aren't I talking mean, about DMT more? I uh, I personally don't don't believe, but I, I I'm under the impression that when you see people talking about making the connection between fluoride in the water, calcification of the pineal pineal producing DMT. Oh, right. There seems to be a kind of a uh, a meme that's going around right. of, of the government or whoever wants to wants to mind control us is trying to suppress our DMT because DMT is the, is the key to our kind of spiritual essence or you know that that kind of where you're just making all these connections without really a rigorous um, yeah evidence especially the pineal link. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. But still, I mean, I wonder why people aren't you know talking about it more. You know, there's the whole you know pineal calcification thing, and and you know fluoride, but uh, you know that I think is you know peripheral, um, you know, to the underlying assumption which you know fuels that uh, conspiracy, you know, which is we produce you know DMT uh, in our body, and yeah, you know, so the whole you know question, uh, you, you, well, you can't really you know, calm conspiracies with, you know, facts, because th then the conspiracies just, you know, change uh, to incorporate the objections to them. Um, you know, but I think um, you can sidestep it by, you know, pointing to the fact that there is DMT in the brain, you know, not, you know, necessarily in the pineal gland. Yeah. I mean, my, my you, you know, take... I've got, you know, some ideas um, about why, yeah, I've got you know some ideas about you, you know why people aren't you know talking about you know DMT uh, more. One reason is it's completely weird, and uh, it just would be very hard to introduce into public discourse. Uh, it just would be too weird. It'd be you know people wouldn't know what you were talking about, uh, yeah. you know, without having had that experience or at least you know, hearing about that experience. And, you know, and, uh, you, know, you know, most people haven't, um, you know, number two, uh, is that, you know, besides, you know, being weird, the implications are incredibly troubling. It throws into question the you know, basis of reality. You know, is this just an ongoing DMT vision that we're all living in? And most people don't want to really think about that. Um, and, you know, thirdly, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> characterization, well, you know, from a scientific point of view, you know, from a PR point of view, from a, you know, you know how to change your mind point of view, it uh, stands outside of current, uh, you know, discourse about, you know, psychedelic drugs. Uh, you know, psychedelic, you know, drugs are a gateway into, um, you know, you know, being happy. Uh, being fulfilled, you know, not being anxious, not being depressed, uh, you, you know, feeling well, uh, being cured, being healed. Uh, you know, so DMT is kind of, you know, that's really, you know, not what's going on with, with DMT. It isn't like uh, a new antidepressant or a new anti-addiction drug. It's, you know, DMT that thrusts you into this very strange place. Uh, you know, so... You know, the New York Times will be a lot more comfortable, you know, talking about, uh, you know, rating scale scores for pain and depression and opiate use uh, improving, you know, than they are 
about, uh, you know, people's DMT experiences. Um, I, you know, so I think, you know, because of, you know, those reasons, uh, it isn't part of the mainstream, you know, discourse, but, uh, you know, it's increasingly, you know, part of the, you know, psychedelic, you know, drug discourse. And, you know, scientifically as well, you know, you know, science, you know, marches on, there are increasing amounts of data, you know, regarding the role and function of DMT. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. My take on that, I think, is that we live in a culture that's so focused on, um, so values ordinary everyday waking consciousness where we can be productive and, you know, uh, take part in society in, in that specific way. The mainstream culture seems to have a deep hostility to altered states in general, um, you know, because we're supposed to kind of stay in our lane and, and keep trudging along. And so it's a minority of people who, who engage with altered states in the first place. And then where they are, where they're taken to be, when they're moved into the mainstream, it's when they, they are valuable for that mode of productivity. You know, so with meditation, it's all about reduce your stress, be more effective at work. You know, um, we see kind of corporate mindfulness, this kind of thing. Um, and as you say, DMT is, is kind of, you know, go and visit some strange alien landscape for a while, come back down and some, you know, some people have therapeutic benefit, but compared to other psychedelics, as you say, it's kind of just a strange sightseeing tour through, through God knows what, you know, you, you could say your mind or through, you know, people have different theories about what it is, but um, yeah. And then because it's subjective, you know, I mean, our culture has a deep uh, fear of, 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 of subjectivity, even I would say, you know, it's only a hundred years ago, we had behaviorism in psychology and neuroscience where it's, just pretend the mind doesn't exist. It's too subjective. It's too hidden. And so, if someone says to you, "They've had this strange, exp you know, experience," it's far easier just to say, "Well, they've, they've got they're mentally ill. They've had something strange happen. It was an odd drug experience. There's nothing of value here. Let's get on with our lives." Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's we're seeing it gain traction now because it is so astounding. But I think you're right that it's, it's hard to know what what to do with it really. <laughs> Right, right. It's hard to know what 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 to do with it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but I think that the more people you know who consider that question, you know, the more um, intelligent, you know, the better, and the more well trained, the better. Uh, I think we'll we'll start we'll start answering it. Um, you know, it you know could end up being this huge you know this huge uh, you know tautology. Uh, that uh, or you know recursion or you know something that just you know you know really doesn't have a you know definite stop kind of answer. Um, you know if you know DMT is you know modulating our you know, sense of reality, then what you know modulates it. You know so I think it's just this some you know very difficult to uh, to you know grasp uh, implications. Uh, and, you know, ultimately, uh, it may not make all that m much of a difference, uh, you know, what it's doing uh, in our, in, in, in our you know, bodies. Uh, the you know, fact is, it is in our bodies and certain things you know, happen to us, um, experiences and the like. So uh, we're still, you know, living in the world of, you know, cause and effect. Uh, you know, one of my you know, friends, if, you know, she got too stoned. You know, she would um, slip into the brain in a bottle, uh, you know, delusion, you know, that this was, you know, just like the matrix. It was a brain in a bottle, you know, that was having this kind of experience. And I, and I um, you know, used to say to her, what difference does it make? Uh, I mean, you know, this is our experience. Um, you know, there's cause and there's effect. Um, we still are responsible for the things we do and say and think and feel, uh, you know, so um, we still ought to try to be good. We ought to still try to avoid doing bad, you know, so it, I think ultimately it wouldn't really make any difference. I suppose for a small cadre of mad, of, you know, mad scientists who will want to split the veil and end the matrix, uh, it'll be of interest, but I think, you know, practically, uh, it you know doesn't make all that much you know, difference. You know it's interesting to you know think about like is there a compound in our brains that you know regulates our you know sense of reality? But it's one of those things. If so, so what? I mean, you know this is our reality, and you know we got to make the most of it. 
Yeah, I definitely agree. I like that grounded kind of approach where if it turns out that we're in a simulation and we wake up from it when we die, then okay, I'll wait until I die and then I'll be surprised, but I, I wouldn't have wasted my time <laughs> playing out my life here.